Hello guys, I'm back again. Uh, as promised in my earlier video, uh, I'm back with another video which uh, will explain what is odbc.ini file, what is tsenv, that is ts environment file, and what is host file. So these three files are very important files which is used on every server where ODBC connections are made, where environments are defined. So uh, I'm going to explain about those files today. I'll also show you the practical, which is our motive here. So first of all, let me explain what, what they are basically. Let me enlarge a little bit. Yes, I think it will be more visible to you then. Yeah, so what is odbc.ina file? Where it resides? It resides in your DS Engine directory, where your DS Engine is installed. The odbc.ini file provides information about connecting to all the databases and database client applications that you use in your project. You must configure this file so that IBM information, infrastructure information server can access odbc data sources. In my earlier video, I told you, I, I explained you that how to connect to ODBC data sources, right? How we get connection from our data source server. So, ODBC.ini file contains those uh, databases and their configuration variables. I, I'll also show you that ODBC.ini file, what it contains, and how does it looks like. So, uh, this is basically all your connections, all your uh, Database's name, their uh, location, which database you want to use, and uh, what, what are the you know uh, what are the things, what are the properties you are going to use with the database in case your data server is trying to connect to that uh, database or server. In case that server is not reachable, then how many reconnect uh, you know times you want to try. So that all uh, configuration setting is done inside this ODB suite and I think. Now moving to DS ENV file, that is your DS environment file. It again resides in your DS engine directory. So if you remember in every other video I am telling you about sourcing this DS environment file. So basically when we source that DS environment file, so whatever the parameters or the variables or environment variables are present in, inside this file are exported to your data source server, which will be used for further processing of your tools. So uh, if we talk about the, you know, what, what it contains, so for some DBC connection, plugins and connectors, and for interaction with external application, such as IBM WebSphere MQ, you must add environment variables to enable interactive use of ODBC drivers to make a connection to our DBC data source. So I, I explained that, uh, you know, in ODBC.ina file you have ODBC connection, as already explained in earlier video, how to connect to Oracle sources. So again, here you need to define that Oracle home directory and everything in case you want to make sure that uh, you know you are very well connecting to that Oracle source. Again, I'll open this file and show you that what is there. Last but not the least, we have the host file. Now, what is what is this host file? So first of all, guys, it resides in etc slash etc directory on your server. It is always in this directory, but maybe it can depend on the project, the configuration, how they how and where they want to place it. But maximum, it is the same directory where it will be placed. It contains your SID to the exact server name. So in your data state server, everywhere you can just use the SID and only in host file you can put the server name or the IP address you want to place. So let us take an example, like you uh, are going to an organization today, you got selected to that organization, and your name is Raghav, Raghav Pal. So now your ID has been made as Raghav.pal at the rate, uh, whatever the company you are going to. But there will be a unique ID assigned to you, like 1234. So 1234 will be signifying to your name that will be directly linked to it. So you can understand that uh, rathal.pal is your SID and uh, 1234 is your IP address or your connection identifier. So everywhere on your organization, rathal.pal will be used. But at the back end, if you want to change uh, like uh, anything for rathal.pal, you will just change 1234 to any other ID 
every other place you don't have to change anything because 1 2 3 4 will be linked to your raghav.pal if you want to do it 2 3 4 5 So now raghav.pal everywhere will be used as two three four five. Same way, if you want to change the IP address of some uh, uh, you know some server and that server is used at at fifty uh, fifty places on your server, so you just have to change only the IP address in the host file, nowhere else. So that it is basically for uh, you know generality, so that you don't have to make a lot of changes. So now uh, these are the three files, uh, important files. Now I'm going to open that and explain you. But what are the important directories we should be considering is directory where ODBC driver is installed. So guys, uh, you know you are going to use ODBC drivers in your ODBC dot INI file to connect to ODBC uh, servers. Uh, so the ODBC uh, open database connectivity to any tool. So in your data set install directory, there will be a directory server, and then in directory branded underscore ODBC, and then libly for library. So this directory contains your all drivers which are installed. In case you want to use a SQL Server uh, connection, in that case SQL Server, uh, you know that driver should be present in this directory. And this is first of all installed ODBC driver installed on your directory uh, of this directory. Later on, you use those ODBC drivers to connect to different uh, data sources. So, so guys, as you are now aware about what is ODBC dot INI file, DSENV file, and host file, so now we will see practically that how these looks like and what are the uses. So, uh, this ODBC dot INI file resides in your DS Engine directory. So, I'll go to my DS Engine directory. I'll open that ODBC dot INI file. This is just I made for you to explain. So whenever your ODBC dot INI file will open, it will have it will be having your ODBC data sources, and these will be your FID names, which will be having your these names will be these names, and this description that which kind of driver it is will be. This description. You need to make sure that this is a string FID should match to this string, and this description should match to this description, so that you know whenever a person will ask you that which is this ODBC data sources, so you can quickly search the description here, and then then you can move out like if this is present, you can search it out in your ODBC dot INI file. Basically, it will be like an index or a search pattern for you. So now you know you have DB2 wire protocol here. The driver name. This is the driver name. So guys, uh, you know when you are on Unix or Linux server or it is a Windows one. Until and unless you want to, you know, uh, going to contact to any ODBC sources like the Data SQL Server, Oracle, these sources, then you need to install the driver on that server. Otherwise, you will not be able to contact them. So same way, this is a driver. It resides under your ETL D stage information server. Server. This is the same path, and then your branded ODC ODBC directory and library, and then this will be your driver. Then these will be your parameters which you want to set while you connect to those SIDs like DB2 server. So these, if you see, these all are the parameters you want to set. Login ID password will be in your, you know, some password protected password protected file. What is the package name? TCP port. Withhold parameter as one. So these are the parameters you can define while you connect to any ODBC source. So you have for DBase here. For DBase, there will be different kind of parameters. For Informix, this is the your data data driver. Login ID password. Server name, host name, so every database having different kind of parameters. So same will be mentioned here. For Oracle, you know this driver, and then array size. Again, all parameters corresponding to that database. You see SQL Server, user ID, password. So I have defined one 
data source here for you. The data source that is a SQL Server named as ABC and description is SID on SQL Server 11. This SQL Server 11, SQL underscore Server 11 is your server name. Now, the server name uh, you must have seen in IP addresses, like there must be an IP address, but here we have defined it as a name. We have given it as a SID. So guys, you need to make sure whenever you are creating any server and you want to connect it from your database or from your server, then you always use the SID everywhere on your server, despite of one place. That one place will be your host file. So all the IP addresses should be used only in your host file and everywhere else you should use only the SID. So wherever you want to use the server, this IP address, you just use this SID name. Correct? So you can see now for Citus, Citus Web Protocol, again all the parameters. For text files, there will be parameters. For Teradata, again this is uh, this is the driver name, Teradata num. Earlier this was a driver name, but after some time that uh, you know driver name was changed as this was not working fine. So I been provided with a new uh, driver. So this was a driver name. Again, all the parameters which will be residing for that particular database. This will be contained in your ODBC beta NFA. Now moving on to DSENV file. I told you that it, again it resides in your DSENV directory and it contains your ODBC connections, plugins, connectors, and what are the path variables and all, environment variables. So let's move on to the practical now. I'll show you DSENV file. We are already in DS home directory. So I'll open that DSCNV file for you. Again, I created a test file. So guys, you will see that DSCNV is data state environment file, and there will be some description given on. Then there will be some variable set up in DSCNV file. You can see that DS home, which I was doing CD DS home, that is already defined here, DSCNV directory. APD or com, so uh, what is the APD or com will be defined here. That is for your parallel engine. Same way your ASD home, where your ASD node uh, gets defined, that ASD home path will be here. Your DS home path. Again, the ODBC.ini file path. See, In DS home we have defined. So this DSCNV file also contains, that is an environment file also contains your ODBC.ini file path. It also contains some uh, language local and instance home, it is for DB2. So this DB2 instance will be running on your server and this will be your DB2 instance name. It also shows that where your DB2 is installed, DB2 directory. So this is a directory where your DB2 is installed. Same way it also shows for Oracle. What is the Oracle home and where Oracle is installed? What is your date format which you use? What is your path variable, which will be used to connect to Oracle? You can see the SQL plus this is the utility which, which will be used to connect to Oracle from your data state server. Library path, export library path, some variables as required on the server, you limit parameters, NDR control parameters, DS wait startup, that means your data state should uh, you know, wait at, uh, you know, your data is started and should wait for 600 seconds before getting disconnected automatically. That is 10 minutes. So all these variables and environment variables will be defined into DSCNV file. Now moving to the last one, host file. So it resides in ETC directory. Whatever server it is, either Unix or Linux, always host file will be present into this directory, ETC directory. So it will contain your SID to the exact server name. So let's move uh, to there, player, CD ETC. I'll open that uh, host file for you now. It is basically hosts, H-O-S-T-S. So now you'll see that what it contains, some predefined uh, things written here, like these are the comments, and something about uh, host file, that what is the host file is. And you know this is 127.0.0.1 is your loopback loop localhost. You should never change it. It is basically for your Linux server. 
Now, if you remember, I showed you only this dot and I find this SQL underscore server one one. That was the SID which I used for SQL server, and the IP address is stored here. So you need to remember that whatever the IP address you are going to define, that will always be in your host file. Only the SID will reside everywhere on your server, so that whenever you are going to change the IP address of this server, you just need to change it into host file, nowhere else. Everywhere this SID will be used, and you can change only your IP address here, so that nothing is going to be changed anywhere, so that work load will be reduced. And this is your data center server uh, IP addresses present here. By putting this hash, you can provide the command that what IP address it is or what it is used. So guys, I think it is clear to you now what is ODBC to INI file, DSCNV file, and host file. It is very easy to understand. And these are the most critical files on your data center server, which you should learn to uh, you know make changes whenever it is coming to making connection to different kinds of data sources. So guys, stay tuned and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to get updates on my new tutorial coming in. There will be a lot of package for you coming in, and that is for free. So subscribe to my channel and stay tuned.